Hi, third, fourth, and fifth grade leaders. We're preparing for our lesson on February 16th in our series called Lost and Found. We've been talking about in this series about the time that the Israelites were in captivity in Babylon that they were lost. And then King Cyrus, as we learned last week, released the um, Israelites to go back to Jerusalem and to rebuild the temple. And where we pick up our story today is they are 50,000 of the Jewish people went back to Jerusalem. They're they're having to rebuild everything. And as they're rebuilding everything, they're meeting opposition from people living in the land. And it's just plain hard, like rebuilding. If you remember going back to after Hurricane Harvey, rebuilding is a hard work. Like it's hard to have enough supplies. It's hard to have um, enough time to rebuild your house and your business and your temple and your everything. Like everything just feels really hard. And so the people get really discouraged and decide that maybe because it's so hard, God didn't really mean for them to be there or to be um, back um, rebuilding the temple. And in fact, there's a story that comes out of this of a um, worker that works for King Darius coming to the people and asking them, are you supposed to even be doing this? And they're like, yes, we're supposed to be rebuilding the temple. And he didn't believe them. And so he writes a letter to King Darius and he asks them, him, um, are they supposed to be rebuilding the temple? And so King Darius has to go back through the scrolls to see what King Cyrus had written um, about the people moving back to Jerusalem. And he did, in fact, tell them to move back to rebuild the temple. And not only did he tell them to do it, but he was going to help finance it and he was going to help he sent them with things to help them get started with. And so what we see through that is God's provision for his people and that his plan is still working out, even though things are hard and things are not going the way the people thought that it should be going. I think there's so many times that all of us fall into that. If it gets hard, well, maybe God doesn't love me as much as he says he does. Or, um, Maybe this is your thought. Well, if it's hard, maybe God didn't really mean for me to be doing this right now. And so there's lots of things that go on in our head that discourage us. But what we know is that God's plan continues to happen, whether it's hard or easy or ugly or not fun or all of the things that we negatively um, think about should be happening if God means good for us. God still means good for us. There just may not be a lot of good um, happening around us every time because we live in this separation, um, the sin world, uh, until Jesus returns. And so um, that is our story today. And uh, your small group time today, you are going to, sorry, I'm looking for my little cards. Um, in your, when you get to your small group, your um, challenge today is to build a ta the tallest tower. You will have some spaghetti noodles and some tape and uh, measuring tapes that you can see who builds the tallest spaghetti noodle. And also a big marshmallow or a peep or something that I can find to add to it to put on top of your your tower to show that it stands up. And so these fun activities are ways for you to build relationships with kids. Some kids need to play games and be competitive. Some kids need the opportunity to be creative. And so by having these kind of activities right now, we're helping those creative kids in particular. Um, if you have super competitive kids, maybe you want to see who can build it the fastest or use the smallest number of spaghetti noodles or, you know, you could still make it some kind of competition if you need to do that to keep everybody interested in the activity. Then when you get to your small group time, you will have a bag full of um, some papers, a mirror, and some other papers. And this is what you're going to do. 
what you're going to do is give each kid a blank sheet of paper and they're going to take their paper across the short end and fold it in half like this so their their full sheet of paper they're going to fold it on the short end the eight and a half side they're going to take it and fold it in half and then on one side of the paper they're going to write temple then and on the other side of the paper they're going to write temple now and then you are going to encourage the kids or show the kids this picture it's kind of a cartoon sketch of the temple And so on the left side of the paper, the left side of the paper has the temple bin. They're going to try to draw the temple on that side of the paper. And so they can use, um, and if they wanna turn it this way so that they can draw more like what is actually on the paper, they can do that. However you want to do that, it really doesn't even matter. And then on the other side of the paper, they are going to draw a picture of themselves. Because what we learn in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 is that God calls us his temple. That he indwell when we believe that Jesus is our Savior, his Holy Spirit indwells us. And so we are the temple, um, like the temple would have been then. We are God's temple, and because of that, we are God's representative to other people of who God is. And maybe you'll want to use your mirror um, so that kids could. It's really just kind of fun if they need a mirror to figure out how to write, or maybe they want to. Um, draw a, a mirror image of themselves on the paper if they're super artistic, they can do that as well. Um, and then you can follow your words on the paper. It says your pictures represent the temple then and now. God's people rebuilt the temple to glorify God. The temple gave them a place to worship God. Years later, God sent his son Jesus to be with his people. Now, God dwells not in the temple, but directly with his people. Jesus provided something better than the temple. He gives us himself. And so um, help the kids talk about this as you are finishing up. In fact, I want to give you kind of a little small group leader hint. Um. One of the ways to have better discussion in your small group is to do this activity and then in between you doing things, kind of put your discussion questions in there. This is why. Um, in school, and I'm sure that you feel the same way, there's always this idea of I, I need to give the right answer. And if I don't give the right answer, then I can't have this conversation. And so as you um, begin to put your questions in the middle of you doing an activity, you're taking off the whole quiz mentality where, you're, where you have to get the right answer. And you're cre creating an environment where people can begin to discuss these big things and ask big questions. Like one of the ways that um, I do this within my small group of girls is I listen as they are talking about um, things just as they're coming in. And then as we begin to talk about our Bible story and talk about things, I will bring up something that they talked about earlier and ask them directly based on that situation, how they could use what they're learning from the Bible today in that situation. Same thing that you're trying to create when you create discussion. You can use these discussion questions. Those are there for your, for your help and for your benefit, but it's not so that a kid gets the right answer necessarily. Those discussion questions are to help them begin to think and to begin to process what's happening in small group and what they're learning from the Bible in a smaller setting so they can begin to express that in other ways to other people. 
hoping that that helps you a little bit as you begin to build your small group environment that um, we don't we don't sometimes there is exactly a right answer and a wrong answer but i would so much rather there be discussion than there to be a right answer or a wrong answer because as we begin to build discussion we can come to each other when we have bigger questions all right okay and then your memory verse activity you have some ping pong balls where's my ping pong balls your ping pong balls and your cups and honestly guys However you are playing this game, I'm sure the kids are having fun with it. You could have the, you could lay all the cups at the end of a line and help kids find the words in order and they have to drop it in a cup as they race down to the end of the line. You could do it that way. You could do this a whole lot of different ways. More than anything, we want kids to learn the memory verse. And if a few little ping pong balls with the words of the memory verse help them do that, then I think that's a great way for us to learn to play this, to, to learn the memory verse together. And those memory verses help us build that foundation of God being the center of our lives. Uh, one of your last discussion questions, why is God the best foundation for our life? And then you can pray with your kids and send them on their way, encourage them to find a way that they can figure out what their next step is. Maybe their next step is to acknowledge that Jesus is their savior. Maybe their next step is to um, take a step of obedience and to show everybody else that Jesus is their savior by being baptized. Maybe their next step after they've done those two things is to learn to grow on their own, not only just come to small group, but find ways that they can um, be engaged in building a relationship with God through prayer, through Bible story, through listening to worship music on their own, through maybe writing a worship song or learning to journal or different ways that they can learn to engage with God. These last three steps are not necessarily steps you have to do in that order. I think sometimes some of us need to serve before we can do some of the other things. And so the last three steps that don't have to be done in order, but um, the last three steps are study on your own, serving and sharing. And so all of these three things can be done in tandem. As you begin to learn something, then maybe you begin to figure out a way that you can serve and show, show that to someone else. And as you're doing that, you can talk about what God is doing in your life. And so all of these three steps, while we make them um, five steps, these last three steps sometimes happen all at once. Like you're doing one of each of those things as you are beginning to take a next step and a next step and a next step. And I don't know that any of those last three steps, we ever get to the point where we can say, oh, I've already done that. I don't need to do that anymore. No, God needs us to continue to be his temple and to share his word with everybody we meet. Thank you so much for leading today. I look forward to seeing you guys soon.